G'day folks, welcome back to Karen's Training. So today we're going to look at selecting and inspecting lifting equipment. Okay, so before we decide what lifting equipment we're going to use, we need to first look at the load. All right, we're going to have to have a look at the weight of the load and we're going to have to have a look at how we're going to um, sling the load. So to work out, once we've worked out the weight of the load, we've got to look at the slinging method. So if it's going to be choked around that load, then we need to take into account any reading factor that's involved. Okay, if it's going to be on an angle, all right, you need to take the angle factor into account. All right, keeping in mind that if you do have it choked around a load, then the angle can be no more than 60 degrees, okay? If it's directly attached to the load without any reeving, all right, then the 120 degrees is gonna be your maximum angle, okay? So once we've taken all that into account and we've decided what uh, capacity sling we need, all right, then we can start um, inspecting our lifting gear. Okay, so how do we know what the capacity of the lifting gear is? Okay, so I've heard some videos recently where they've said count the number of lines on it, okay? Which is all well and good in most instances. Yes, you can do that, all right? Now, the problem with that is not every sling has the lines on it. And if you are looking at a 50-ton sling, you really don't want to be standing there counting out 50, all right? Um, some people will tell you to rely on the color of the sling. Yes, works in most instances. So for example, a violet sling, such as this one, is going to be good for one tonne. A green sling is going to be good for two tonne, yellow is three, grey is four, red is five, etc. Until you reach 10. Once you reach 10 tonne, a 10 tonne sling is orange, so it's a 50 tonne, so it's a 100 tonne, anything above 10 tonne is going to be an orange sling. So, the most reliable way to work out the capacity of a sling is simply look at the tag. So. Keep in mind, if the sling doesn't have a tag on it, or you can't read that tag, then it's defective. The tag must be on there. The tag will tell you exactly how much the sling can lift and in what configurations. Okay, so now we know we've got a sling that's suitable for the task, all right, then we need to inspect it. Now, there are three types of slings that we're gonna typically use. We're gonna use these synthetic slings. We can use our chain slings or we can use our flexible steel wire rope slings. So we'll take a look at them individually. Now there is one common defect that you're going to find across the board is if it's got no working load limit on it, okay? So in the instance of a synthetic or a chain sling, all right, they must have a tag on them. All right, a flexible steel wire rope doesn't have a tag, but it does have the working load limit stamped on the ferrule. So we'll take a look at them shortly. We'll start with our synthetics. Okay, so soft slings, there are two types of soft sling. All right, you've got your uh, flat webbing sling like that, or you may have a sausage or a round sling. Okay, so as you can see, even with these two, all right, one has line on it, the other doesn't. Okay, both violet, both one tongue. So, when we're looking at our slings, okay, First thing you're going to look for is any sign of wear or abrasions on the um, sling itself, okay? So we'll stick with this one to start with. Okay, if there's any wear or abrasions on the sling, okay? If there's any sign of UV damage, okay? Another one that can be across the board on all three of them is they've been exposed to excessive heat, okay? So heat damage can affect all of your um, slings, Okay, chains, flexible steel wire rope, synthetics, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I've said UV damage, all right. If there's any damage to the stitching, all right, any signs of chemical damage, if you see any cuts or tears, all right, it's all gonna make these defective, all right. So it gives a good thorough inspection and make sure you're looking for any signs of damage to the slings, okay. So make sure you check along the whole sling, all right. So. This all looks good until we get to the tag, all right? No tag, can't be used, okay? So there are your synthetic slings. Okay, we'll chuck that back. All right. And we will look at our flexible steel wire. Okay, make sure I get the right end, here we go. All right, so on a flexible steel wire rope, as I said, the working load limit is going to be stamped on the ferrule. Now, if you can't read that working load limit, 
then you're going to tag it out. Now, one of the most common defects you're going to find on your flexible steel wire rope is if it's kinked. So if it's got a kink in it, all right, where you can see it's damaged to the strands, you're going to tag it out. Okay, now, when you're checking it, start from one end, work your way all the way down, looking for any sign of damage, okay? If there's any damage to the eye, all right, so if you can see that's been pinched in there, all right, you're going to tag it out. If it has a thimble on the inside and there's any damage to the thimble, tag it out. Okay, check the ferrule, make sure that's nice and tight, it's not loose. All right, work your way all the way down, okay? If you see any signs of stretching at all, it's got to be tagged out, all right? Signs of stretching means it's been overloaded. Once it's overloaded, it can't be used. Okay, if you see any broken wires outside of the allowable limit, okay, it must be tagged out. Any strands broken or any high stranding, so once again, tag it out. Okay, bird caging is another common defect you may find on a flexible steel wire rope. So when I say bird caging, all right, so bird caging is when the strands open up as such on the flexible steel wire rope. Okay, now, some other defects you're gonna find. Now, if it's made out of metal, chains, flexible steel wire rope, etc. all right, there are some common ones. We start with the no work load limit, obvious one, all right? Any signs of heat damage, um, harsh chemicals can affect all of it, all right? Anything made out of metal can be stretched, all right? Or if there is any excessive wear outside of the allowable limit. Now, I get um, questioned quite often, how much wear is too much wear? The best thing I will tell my students is, if you look at it and you suspect it's wear, worn, good chance it's worn. So what, if you suspect it's wear, just tag it out, um, set it aside, don't put it back in the um, rigger's loft, set it aside and let the supervisor know so he can go and have them tested on a test bed, okay? So if you're unsure of anything, don't take risks, all right? Because you don't want the load coming down on top of you. Anytime you're unsure, tag it out, place it to the side and get someone um, a little more qualified to actually inspect them for you, all right? So we'll move on to our chains, all right? So with our chains, okay, we're going to, once again, make sure it's got that working load limit, all right? So the working load limit is going to be on the chain, all right? I'll bring this up a little bit closer so you can get a better view. Okay, so on there you can see you've got two rows of figures. So one row is a direct attachment, which is how much you can lift at 60, 90 and 120 degrees. Okay, you'll notice on the other side, where it's, set, where it's reeved around that load, it's only got the figure at 60 degrees. Okay, now, the reason it's only got the figure at 60 degrees as I said before, if it's choked around the load, 60 degrees is the maximum angle you can use. Direct attachment, it's going to be 120 degrees. Okay, now, the thing you've got to keep in mind with chains, um, unlike synthetic slings or flexible steel wire rope, if it is choked around a square load, it is the same deration as it is for a round load. Okay, so I'll get this one, it'll give you a better idea. All right, so you've got a direct load, and this symbol here means whether it's square or around. Okay, so square or round, it's going to be the same deration. So in this instance, straight lift, you're good for two ton, and for a round lift, you're good for 1.5 ton. Okay, well, I've got this here. Actually, I'll go back to this other one. Okay, so we'll come back and take a look at this tag. All right, what information is on the tag? All right, so you'll notice it has the grade. So in this instance, it's B grade, which is 100. All right, it's got your angle factors and your reaving factors on there. It tells you what size chain it is. Okay, it's got the manufacturer's name. Okay, and over on the back, as with all lift equipment, it should have a serial number and a date of test. Okay, so that's your 100 grade chain, all right? If it's got a T on it, that will be 80 grade. 
So 80 grade and 100 grade are your most common chains you're going to be using. Okay, now when you're testing your chain, when you're inspecting your chains, inspect the whole component. Okay, so you can start with the ring. So with the ring, um, basically look for any deformities or anything out of the ordinary. Okay, so if it's got cracked, if it's bent, if it looks like it's been stretched, okay, if you see any form of gouging or anything along those lines, all right, once again, tag it out. All right, from there we move down to the hammer locks. So the hammer locks are these components here that attach the shorteners and the chain to the ring. Okay, so they should be able to move nice and free. All right, that pin should be nice and straight inside of there. Okay, so if you have a look, you can see that pin there. Okay, let's get a little bit closer. All right, so the green component there is our hammer lock. All right, then we have our sling shorteners. All right, which are these ones here. All right, so when you're looking at your shorteners, once again, um, look for any signs of wear. Okay, look for any signs of any being cracked, twisted, stretched, all right, bent out of shape, anything along those lines. Now, the chain itself, all right, you, you'll start roping up on the crane and check all the chains as it comes down, okay? Looking for any signs of stretching, any excessive rust, okay? Any form of heat damage or gouging, okay? Um, so if there's any peanutting on it, seen any cracked links, okay? Any broken links, cracked links, all right? Obviously, you're not gonna continue using it, all right? Once you get it all the way up, Okay, when you get to the bottom end, all right, you've got your hooks. All right, so with your hooks, all right, all right, so you should have no more than 10% or more wear in the bite of the hook there, all right, and no more than 5% stretch in the bill of the hook. Okay, make sure your safety latches open and close, all right, with those nice and stiff, all right. Okay, look for any wear inside the ring as well. Right, and also make sure you're checking these hammer locks, make sure they move nice and freely. Okay. Now, how are you going to tell if the chains are stretched? Nice and easy way is as you rope up, when you get the bottom of the hooks level with you, just make sure both hooks are sitting at the same height. If one is sitting up above the other, all right, good chance they've been stretched. Okay. So make sure you check them thoroughly, okay? Because you want to make sure everything's safe before you start lifting, okay? Now, there are, is other ancillary equipment that we can use, all right? And I'll talk about some of that ancillary equipment at a later stage. So we're going, we can look at things like lifting clutches, okay? Shackles, eye bolts, um, all those sorts of things we're going to have a look at uh, further on, right? But your chains are the one thing that you're going to be using all the time. Well, chains, slings, flexible steel wire rope. So make sure you do give them a good and thorough inspection prior to use, all right? Make sure you're using the correct ones and don't forget to take into account the angle factors and the reaming factors, okay? A lot of people, I'll tell you my experience, most common chains I've seen stretched are the 10 mil chains. Why? Because most riggers will be able to tell you a 10 mil chain can lift five and a half tonne. So they'll go to lift a load that's four tonne, all right, and they'll say, Okay, we'll go grab the um, 10 mil chains. So they grab the 10 mil chains, all right, and then they choke them around that square load. All right, those 10 mil chains are no longer good for five and a half tonne. When they lift it, they're gonna overload the chains. All right, so make sure you take into account your reaving factors as well as your angle factors prior to um, using them, okay? No worries. Well, thanks for that, and we'll um, talk about some other equipment later. All right, and as I've said previously, very shortly I will be putting up some more videos on the crane calculations. Right, so I'll try and cover off the C6, I'll do another one on C1 and I'll do another one on CA. Okay, so if you want to keep informed, don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, and thanks for listening.